Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone for the second webinar uh, for this year's Give Back Tahoe Giving Season Fundraising Strategies. My name is Lisa. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause, and I'm really excited to talk to you about fundraising strategies for Give Back Tahoe Giving Season. So we're first just going to go over some platform basics uh, for those of you who didn't attend the Getting Started webinar or are looking to get back onto the platform and make some updates to your page. We're going to go through some just general basics that are good refreshers if this is um, your uh, first year or returning year. So just a reminder, uh, Give Back Tahoe will start on Giving Tuesday on the 29th and will go until the end of the year. Registration does close tomorrow. So if you haven't registered yet, you do wanna make sure you register. If you're unsure if you have registered, if you're on your organization page in your overview, uh, you can see your registration status and it will tell you if you've been approved or if you're pending or if you haven't registered yet. We will be having a follow-up webinar after the Give Back Tahoe giving season on January 5th, where we'll talk about a post-event follow-up and strategies after the giving season, after year-end fundraising, what are some good strategies to use and implement and how you can use the Give Back Tahoe platform um, in order to uh, continue fundraising for your organization. Uh, and as well, um, you want to make sure that just if once you've completed registrations that you have um, any necessary team members set up as administrators on your page. And we'll also go through those settings as well. So just a breakdown of the dashboard uh, that's available on your organization page. If you're an administrator and you're logged in as an administrator, you will see a dashboard on your organization page. And it's broken down in some, some key segments. Um, so overview being where you can see your status, your to-do list, um, as well as a quick view of metrics. Your organization page is where you're going to be able to edit your organization page. And as well, if you need a link to share with donors, you would go to your organization page and that's the URL that you would share. Fundraising tools is where you can add matching grants, manage volunteer opportunities or event opportunities, uh, review all campaigns, um, access a widget. Reports is where you'll find all of your donor data, look up your retention report. Checkout will have where you can update your donation form and your thank you page and receipt message. And then the settings is where you can add uh, your administrators or remove administrators, um, double check or add your EFT information, um, as well as updating you know, your URL if you need that or um, your social sharing image, which we'll get into. So if you haven't done so, you wanna make sure that you complete your to-do list. Um, th these are recommended um, or required um, tasks that we, uh, you know, it's a really great way to, if you're new to get started on the platform or if you're returning, it's a really good guide to look at things that you wanna consider updating on the platform. Something new that we've added this year is a mission statement. So it's a way for you to add one sentence, really brief uh, description about what your organization does um, that maybe is a little bit different to your about section or, or your story slash description where you can be um, share a little bit more about your organization. So you want to make sure if you're a returning nonprofit that you are reading through your story and about section, uh, you're looking through the images that you have placed there and you think through, is there any essential updates I need to make to my page? Like, is this the story that I want to share this year? Um, if you are thinking about your Give Back Tahoe giving season strategy, um, it's always great to first start with an overall goal. What's the goal for your nonprofit this year? And then how, what different strategies you can utilize to lead you to that goal and meeting that goal. Um, so what story that you're saying, what is, uh, what are you trying to tell or donors about 
what you raised last year, how it impacted your nonprofit and what you're looking to do next year. Those are all really helpful things to think through and add to your page or update it. As I mentioned, um, there is a new section called mission statement that is available to you to add a quick brief mission statement about your organization. Uh, as I mentioned, the story and description section is really where you can share different stories about your nonprofit, um, what, how you guys impact your community, et cetera. But your mission statement is really a quick way for donors to quickly see the mission and cause of your nonprofit. So after you've gone through and double checked your organization page and made sure that's updated, you do want to make sure you go to your checkout um, flow and make sure that is updated as well on your dashboard that's available in the checkout section. Uh, the donation form is where you'll be able to edit your custom donation levels and add descriptions. We always recommend adding descriptions to your donation um, form for donation levels because that's a really great way for donors to visually see, uh, you know, the impact that their dollar will make to your nonprofit, you know, for example, $10 donation um, is less impactful than, you know, for $10, you can sponsor a student. Uh, and as well, within the checkout section, you can add your thank you page. So your thank you page is the page that pops up once a donor submits, you know, donate, and their transaction goes through. Uh, it immediately tells them to th um, thank you, but you can add in whatever language, call to action, video, image that you want. Um, and then your donation receipt, uh, we will automatically send a receipt to donors, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you do want to include your own personalized thank you message to donors, you can um, use the donation receipt to add your custom message. And again, if you're a returning nonprofit, you just want to make sure that you're going through these areas to make sure that it's updated for this year's language. So something that we've updated this year is the volunteers tool, which is now called Opportunities. Um, it's available in, under fundraising tools um, and you can find it, it's called Opportunities. And we've really built out the opportunities tool so that um, it can work for a variety of other opportunities that your nonprofit may provide to donors or supporters in your area. Uh, so something that we've added in is that not only does it provide the ability for people to um, sign up to volunteer for your nonprofit, but you can also add an event that you may want to advertise to your network as well. You know, maybe you are having a kickoff to give back Tahoe. Um, you want to, uh, you're, you're having an adoption event, et cetera, whatever that may be, you have the ability to add that information now through the opportunities tool. So we've also enhanced the opportunities tool to for you to be able to designate, not only is it a volunteering opportunity or an event, but if it's in person or online and to provide a link as to where you want individuals to register. So you can ha have the registration set up through the Give Back Tahoe giving season uh, or Give Back Tahoe site. Uh, it's the same kind of setup as it was last year. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to see that by, uh, through the opportunities link, um, which I'll show in a second. Um, or if you do have a volunteer forum through a Google survey, or you have an event that you're selling tickets through through Eventbrite, you can add the link through here. So when um, individuals go to register, they're going to be directed to what you've set up on the platform. So if that's going to a link, they'll be redirected there. Uh, as well, one additional thing that we've added to the tool is the ability to specify whether an opportunity is ongoing or not. Um, so for, there are a lot of volunteer opportunities that are specific one day events like an adoption event, but a lot are ongoing. So for example, if you're looking for a social media volunteer uh, to help you out with the Give Back Tahoe giving season, um, you now have the ability to specify that um, on the opportunity. 
So supporters can view your opportunities on your organization page. There will be a section called Get Involved. And that's where individuals can see all of the volunteer opportunities or events that you have. They can search if it's an opportunity or event, and they can also click to see more information about the volunteer opportunity. So this is an example of a volunteer opportunity with the description and uh, information about it. When an individual clicks register, if you do have an external link set up, it will redirect them to that area. So as you see, they've set up a link to their website. That's where they want users to actually sign up for the volunteer opportunity. And so that's been added there. But again, if you do wanna host it on the site, you can definitely do so as well if you don't want it to go through an external link. So a lot of great updates to the opportunities tool. Um, and there is also a, uh, a link that will be available to all supporters that will list every opportunity or event that nonprofits have entered through the system. So they can easily see different volunteer opportunities and events that um, nonprofits have available. So when sign, once an individual signs up for a opportunity, you will see that information on the opportunities page through your dashboard. You can see how many participants there are. You can also email participants through uh, the platform and you can also download their information if you want to you know, do that outside of the platform as well. Administrators will receive a notification when you do receive um, a, a participant. And as well, uh, if your uh, opportunity has a specific date, uh, individuals will receive a notification or reminder about that. All right, so now that we've gone through uh, some of the just platform basics, uh, some of the new tools available, we're going to go into um, dig into really setting strategy up for Give Back Tahoe giving season. So I mentioned this a couple slides back, but the setting up a goal is really the most fundamental kind of part of uh, any giving season when you're thinking about the strategy you want to implement, because you're not going to know what strategy to implement if you don't know what you're shooting for. So you want to think about SMART goals for your nonprofit. So what is a SMART goal? It's a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-based goal. Every nonprofit is going to have a different goal based off themselves internally. So for some, it may be that you want to you know, increase first-time donors this year, or you want to have donors more engaged. Others may be that they just want to, you know, their goal is to raise $5,000 or $50,000. So look at your metrics from last year um, and think through about what are what do you want to achieve this year? And as it says in the SMART goal, uh, it's really gr great to be specific. So something that's broad, like raise money or just engage overall people, um, that's not going to really help you, guide you as to what kind of strategy you want to implement then, because it's very broad. Uh, so when you're looking at your metrics from last year, it's really helpful to look at um, how many recurring donors you've received, how many first-time donors that you've received, um, and also, also overall um, how many donations and donors that you've received. Like I mentioned, every organization is going to be different. For some, $5,000 is a huge goal. For others, that's a small goal. So think about what your nonprofit, um, you know, what you've seen this past year of how much you've raised so far um, to think through what are some um, monetary goals or just overall goals that you want to set for your nonprofit. But of course, you know, monetary goals aren't the only important goals uh, in regards to a giving season or giving Tuesday, because there's a lot of non-monetary goals that can really help improve your nonprofit's overall, you know, internal goals um, for the year, for example, or next year. So it could be that you want to engage more peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. You want to get your board of directors involved with Give Back Tahoe because they've never participated before. You've been interested in matching grants, but you've never really utilized it. So maybe this year you want to secure a matching grant. 
those are all things to consider uh, when, when coming up with your goals. And because the Give Back Tahoe season, um, you have essentially a whole entire month uh, for, you know, to reach the goal that you have set. It's helpful then to break down that overall goal with many goals throughout the month. Um, so if it is, you know, you want to increase how many followers that you have on social media, maybe biweekly, you have a goal of reaching a certain amount of followers, or if it's to raise a certain amount of money, um, you have a weekly uh, goal in mind of how much you want to raise in order to stay on track for your overall goal. And this is really also helpful uh, and can provide additional communication or content um, when talking with your donors um, or your network. Because if you have an overall goal, for example, you know we want to have um, 20 new donors, that's really great content to share on social media, in your communication, um, to say, hey, we're so close to our goal. We have 10 new donors. Share this with a friend and family. We, have, we need 10 more new donors to reach our goal this year. One thing that you have available to you on the organization dashboard on the uh, Tahoe platform is a donor retention report. Um, because what we found is that donors who have given previously are more likely to give again because they have some sort of relationship now with your organization. Um, so if you, uh, on your dashboard, uh, there is under reports, it is called retention. Uh, and if you are returning nonprofit, you can utilize this report to pull up uh, this year's Give Back Tahoe 2022 giving season. And then you can filter it to show all of your not retained donors so far. And that is a really great list that you can um, start with to start communicating with your donors. Um, so again, this is something you can utilize throughout the entire month. You know, if it gets midway through the month, pull up this list and see how many people have not yet donated again to your nonprofit. If you're brand new, this is a really great tool to utilize next year and for you to know that you have this available to you um, for, your, um, for your metrics and for um, your reporting next year. One thing to just make a note of is that when looking at not, not retained versus retained uh, donors, um, it's basing it off email address. So if a donor did use a different email address this year, um, the system is not going to pick that up. So that's just one thing to be cognizant of um, when looking at this report. All right, so let's talk about matching grants. So for those of you who are not familiar with matching grants, what are matching grants? Matching grants is essentially a marketing tool that organizations utilize to motivate donors to give immediately because it essentially tells them that they can double their impact, they can double their donation, double their money by giving at that time. So it is a motivator for donors to give. Typically matching grants, if you're a nonprofit, um, you would um, work to uh, find a grantor prior to the event, and you would enter that information into the system so that you have the available and you can communicate that to donors. So why are matching grants so utilized by organizations? Why are they so important? Why do we always talk about it every year? Well, according to Double the Donation, 84% um, of donors they found in one of their um, research studies uh, say that they're more likely to donate if a match is offered by a nonprofit. Like 84% is a huge number. And so that tells you that a lot of donors, they wanna make sure that if they're giving, they're gonna, they wanna give with as much impact as possible. So as I mentioned, the benefits of a matching grant is that it serves as a buy one, get one free for a donor. Um, it allows their donation to go even further because if you know that my $10 can be $20, I am definitely more likely to give during that time than any other time. 
Matching grants are also a really great uh, stewardship opportunity um, because it's a new way to get involved. Uh, it's a new way for a donor to help your organization. Um, for example, if you have a major donor that you know writes you a check every year, this is a different way, a different ask that you can ask of that donor. And it also makes their um, donation go even further as well. Matching grants are also a really great strategy for leaderboards and for challenges because they are such a, a motivator for donors to give. They can be used as a great strategy um, for specific time per periods where a prize is involved. And in general, it just, as I mentioned, 84% of donors saying that they would be more interested. It's something that just drives volume and, and traffic to your site. So. So how do you secure a matching grant? So there's three really basic steps involved with securing a matching grant. So one is prospecting. So thinking about, who, well, who could actually provide a matching grant? And we'll talk about some of those people in a second. Outreach, so actually reaching out to those individuals and talking to them about Give Back Tahoe, what a matching grant is and then making the ask, telling them the benefits of a matching grant, how it could impact your nonprofit, et cetera. So there's no rules to who can provide a matching grant. A matching grant can be provided by anyone, anywhere. Um, board members are often, we see really commonly um, a, uh, or demographic of people that will provide a matching grant. Um, so this could be an individual board member, or we've seen um, board members pull their funds together in order to provide a match. So it can be one person or it can be a group of people providing a match. Um, major donors, as I mentioned, this is an opportunity for them to get involved with your nonprofit in a different way. Sponsors or partners, if you've worked with um, a sponsor or partner previously, um, or this could be an opportunity, again, for um, a a company or corporation to support your nonprofit. A lot of companies have um, philanthropy initiatives. Um, and this is one way, instead of just writing a check to a nonprofit, that they, again, can make a larger impact. And collective. So as I said, you know, pull, board members pulling their funds together is one example, but this could be volunteers, staff, uh, you know, any group of people that wants to support your nonprofit. So how do you create a matching grant through the platform? Um, there is a matching grants tool available under the fundraising tool section. So you would go to that area, you would click uh, um, create once you're in the matching grant section, and then you would add all of the details about the matching grant. So the logo, the value, when you want it to start and end, and you would also choose your match type, which we'll get into. So there are lots of different matching grant types that you can add to the platform, and we'll go through each one. So whatever you decide um, as you're brainstorming about, you know, who could offer a match or you're currently talking to someone about offering a match, you know, what are the options available through the platform? So one, uh, the first one and the most common type of match is one-to-one. -one. So meaning 100% of a donation is matched. So if someone makes a $5 donation, their donation is matched. And so it's essentially a $10 donation. A percentage match would be a portion of each uh, donation is matched. Um, so what that means is that instead of 100% of a donation match, maybe it's 50% or 300% of a donation. And cumulative threshold match. So that means that donations are matched based on you meeting a goal. So there's three types of cumulative threshold matches and we'll also get into these in more detail. So one being a dollar amount, second, a quantity of donations. So you have to, you know, have 50 donations in order to reach the match or number of donors. So you have to reach 15 donors in order to receive the match. So as I mentioned, um, 
one-to-one, a hundred percent. That's the most common type of match that's available on the platform. However, uh, you can change that amount. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent. It can be 50% and it can be 300% or whatever percent that you want that to be. Um, we've seen a lot of different um, matching grants on the platform, and that's really dependent on, you know, what you've agreed upon with the grantor. Obviously, 100% and more is going to be the most impactful for donors. Um, however, these are all the different um, available types of matches that you can add onto the platform if need be. And this is as well how it will show up if you've added a logo and the title as well as um, you know, who it's being sponsored by, et cetera. So let's get into cumulative threshold matches. So the first one being apply total match when the total dollars raised equals the match value. So this would mean that let's say you have a grantor that says, um, yes, I will provide you the match, but only if you raise the full $500. If you don't meet the $500, then, you know, the match is not available. Or perhaps this is simply a strategy you want to utilize. Um, so this means that you have to meet the total to get the match um, instead of it being per donation. So again, you would utilize this if you want the match to be based off you meeting that match value amount. Apply total match when a certain quantity of donations is received. So if there is a certain amount of donations uh, that you need to receive in order to get a match. So uh, one thing about donations versus donors is that if a donor one donor, Bob Smith, donates twice during that match period, then it will be counted as two donations because it's just looking at any and all donations that you are receiving through the platform. And apply total match when a certain number of unique donors is reached. So this means uh, that you must have a certain amount of unique donors during that match period for it to count towards the match. So if one donor donates twice during that time, then it's counted as one donor. One thing to think through about all of these different conditions or, or um, available match types is, again, going back to what is the overall goal that you're trying to set up? So for example, if your overall goal is that you really wanna bring in new unique donors, you wanna have new donors supporting your organization, then having a match, for example, that is based on that, such as number of unique donors is really helpful because that is a way that you can communicate to your support network um, and ask people to share, et cetera, because the, your goal in order to receive this match is bringing in unique, new unique donors. So that's why it's really helpful and important to have that overall goal and think through what you want to accomplish, because that can help set up what type of condition do I want to use? Do I want to use a matching grant um, to help me reach my you know, unique donor goal? So as well, when you do set up a matching grant, there are a couple conditions that are available to you to use. So one is set a minimum per donation amount before match is applied. So if you want to set a minimum amount, so let's say $25, that means that um, in order for the match to be applied, you have to make at least, you have to make at least a $25 donation. So if someone makes a $5 donation, their donation is not going to count towards the match. So this would be an example. Again, if your goal is that you want to increase the an average size of a gift, you want to motivate people to make larger gifts. This could be a tool that you could utilize to um, meet that goal because it's setting a minimum for the gift for the match to be applied. Include offline donations in the match. So if you're adding any offline donations in your reporting, um, you want to um, either have this turn on or off. One thing to note is that offline gifts don't count towards leaderboards. So you can have offline gifts count towards your match. However, just one thing to note, they won't be included on leaderboards. 
include organization fundraiser in the match. Um, that means that if you have any fundraising pages tied to your organization, um, those will be any donations that go there will be included in your match. And then apply one match once per donor. So if you just want, you know, once a donor gives, it can't be matched. They can't can't be matched again. You can set that up. The email note, the email section. Um, you would add the email address that you want of the individual um, who would receive an email once the match is um, met. So you can add your own email or you can add your grantor's email. I've seen both. You know, either works. Um, whoever you want to receive that email communication. So, as I mentioned. Um, only online donations count towards leaderboards. So something to really think about is a tool on the match when you're creating it called include match value and page metrics. This always causes confusion um, in regards to matching grants. So I wanna make sure that I break this down and help answer any questions related to this. So what this means, include match value and page metrics means that this tool allows you um, to basically have your metrics automatically update when someone makes a donation if you have a percentage match. So let's say you have a one-to-one -one match, 100% um, of each donation is matched and someone makes a $5 gift. Well, that means that your metrics will jump by $10. Um, so it's automatically updating so donors can see on your page their donation automatically jumping on on the um, um, in the system. However, match values are not included on leaderboards. Again, only online donations. So, if you do have this enabled, one thing you just want to know is that again, that match value won't be on your leaderboard. So, your metrics on your page will be a little bit different than is on the leaderboard, and that is the same for everybody. Um, if the grantor is planning on fulfilling their donation online, then I would recommend disabling this option. And when the grantor, um, when the grant is finished, they can go in and make their donation. If you're planning on adding that match offline, again, even though it won't be counted towards leaderboards, but you're still planning on adding that offline, um, you can add, um, you can, you don't have to add the offline gift on here because this will automatically, um, you know, count it towards your metrics. Um, so just wanted to help break that down um, for everyone. As well, um, when you are setting up your match, you'll be asked to set up a start date and end date. Um, so you wanna think about um, one, making sure that you have the correct start date set up so that you're putting down Giving Tuesday at 12 a.m. There is a calendar tool where you can um, choose uh, the, the time that you want to set and then the end date, whether that's during the two week challenge or th you know, throughout the entire Give Back Tahoe giving season, maybe ending on the 31st. Um, whenever you've entered that end date, that means that the match will end when it's been met or when it's reached that end date. It's really important to understand that matching grants are independent from each other. So if you have multiple matching grants, let's say you have two matching grants and you set them up to both start on Giving Tuesday, uh, that means that both will start. And based off the conditions that you've set up for that match, it's gonna count donations towards it. It doesn't look at the other, they're independent from each other. So if you want two different um, two matches starting at the same time, you're more than happy to do so. But then you just have to know that um, donations that come in, if they meet the conditions of either match, it will count towards both matches. So you could have a donation count towards two matches. But let's say that you don't want it to start at the same time. You want it to go after the other, you want um, one to be queued when one ends. Um, then you wanna set up a queued matching grant. So once you create your first one, so the one that you want to start, when you create your second one, you can select queue this grant to begin after another grant completes. And then you can select what match you want it to go after. Um, so once then in this example, SFMG Wealth Advisors ends, then your match 
will start. Uh, your Mighty Cause board match will start. So just a couple of common questions um, that we get about matching grants. Does the matching grant have to be processed online? No, matching grants don't have to be processed online. However, as mentioned, online donations only count towards leaderboards and prizes. So, um, you know, if you want it to count towards leaderboards and prizes, I would encourage the grantor to make their gift online, but it's not required. Um, why is my match not being included in the leaderboard? As mentioned, only online donations count towards leaderboards. So match values and offline gifts aren't gonna be included in the leaderboards. So. Do donations made to peer-to-peer -to -peer or fundraising pages count towards the match? So um, as I mentioned, this is uh, a condition that you can set. So it's your choice on the, when you create your match or you're editing your match, um, you can choose whether you want to count towards any fundraising pages associated to your nonprofit. Can I have more than one matching grant active at the same time? We also spoke through this. Yes, you can have multiple start at the same time or go one after the other. And then, oh no, I enter my matching grant, my matching grant wrong. What do I do? So one, breathe and relax because we can always fix something um, if something has gone wrong with your match. It's really important to think about this tool. It's a display and reporting tool, right? We're not actually processing gifts directly through the match tool. It's a way for you to advertise to donors that you have a match, and it's a way to um, report internally for yourselves that it's not publicly shown. Um, so if there is an issue with your match, we can always work to fix it. It is not the end of the world. So simply reach out to our support team and we can help fix your match um, and, and see what, you know, what went wrong or how we can help you fix it. So when you have created your match, um, your match will be displayed on your organization page on your donate button. Um, if donors click on the sticker that's on the button, it will take them to the match tile where they can see all of that information about the match. As well, in the search, there is a filter for donors to use if they want to filter by what organizations have matching grants available. And also that will be shown on the homepage of Give Back Tahoe as well. So matching grants are a really great opportunity, as I mentioned before, to um, communicate to your nonprofits about, you know, the opportunity to double their impact. So in your email communication, you want to make sure that you are sharing info information about your match, about when it's available. Um, and so that donors can plan their gifts on social media, you know, utilize matching grants to build hype for your organization on for Give Back Tahoe. Um, as you saw and seen this example, don't miss your chance to double your donation in do August. Um, it's a really uh, easy content tool available to you. Um, and you don't have to make it very complicated. It's something that um, you can use to motivate donors to give. So you wanna make sure that you set it up um, so that a social media post and email does go out when the match is available. So donors know when they can start giving. And as well on your website, um, you know, you should have a section of directing donors to the Give Back Tahoe site, or if you've had a widget enabled, um, then you want to include that language that you have a match available. Matching grants are also can be used in any like traditional, you know, marketing collateral that you may use, such as signs or flyers, if that's something that you typically do or are interested in. Have your staff or board members or volunteers promote their match on social networks, you know, for your board members to share on LinkedIn that, you know, they were able to, you know, they're providing a match or um, their donation was doubled through this match and others can have their donations doubled as well. And any other, you know, place where you're talking about your campaign, again, it's a really good opportunity to share that information about your match. All right, so enough about matching grants. Let's move into another really common type of strategy that organizations utilize for giving seasons, for giving Tuesday, and that's peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. 
So what exactly is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? Peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising is essentially a strategy that asks your existing supporters to fundraise for your nonprofit so you can reach their network of people. So why would someone be interested in participating in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising you know, opportunity? So it's as matching grants are, it's a different ask to ask of someone. So instead of asking a donation, um, if there is volunteers or some sort of network, um, even your board members, um, that you know you are looking for a non-monetary ask, um, this is a really great opportunity. It's also an opportunity for people to get involved with Give Back Tahoe giving season, um, get excited, and as well sh have the opportunity to share their story about why your work is important to them. Um, same thing with matching grants. Anyone can be a uh, anyone can participate in a peer to peer fundraising um, opportunity. Uh, so most commonly, we see board members, volunteers, staff themselves, program alumni, social media followers, anyone in your nonprofit's inner circle. That's a really great opportunity. So we'll talk through a little bit about the platform and how you can utilize the platform um, to create peer to peer fundraising. But one of the always common concerns that we get from organizations is how difficult it will be for participants. You know, is this a time consuming ask, et cetera. So you do wanna make sure that you provide um, like the opportunity as something that is seamless for people. So providing resources, tips, templates that they can reuse. Um, we have a whole toolkit section um, that provides you blog articles, et cetera. You can reutilize that. Um, for the template that you want to provide, you know, for to your board members, for example. And again, why is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising so powerful? As I mentioned, it's the it's an opportunity for someone else to tell your story. So if it's your board members, it's their opportunity to tell their network, their family and friends, why are they a board member of your organization? Why do they spend their time? Um, and their resources to support your organization? Why is it important for them? And why are they asking for a donation? And, and it just in general brings in new donors that you wouldn't have been able to access before. So team fundraising uh, is the type of fundraising page you can utilize for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, it's really the easiest type of fundraising page you can utilize because it allows um, individuals to fundraise together towards a collective goal. So think about it like a group fundraising page. So as you see in this example, this is the board gives back. And then in the leaderboard, it's broken down into individuals that are participating. So this is really great for groups of people doesn't necessarily have to be a set group of people like a board of directors, but um, again, it kind of brings people together towards an overall collective goal. And when you do have a team fundraising page like this through your leaderboard, you can make it as competitive or non-competitive as you want. We've seen both. Some have made it competitive where they've added, you know, their own prizes to, uh, you know, their, their teams. Um, so for example, you know, if you have a t-shirt or even a hat or something, um, ice cream social, seeing a lot of different prizes available um, to people who, uh, the, you know, individual that has raised the most um, in the team, um, or you can make it non-competitive. You can rank the leaderboard by simply names and you can have it be a little bit more fun. Um, I've seen an example of um, an organization that has an annual, um, funny pants competition where everyone participating has a pair of like funny pants and they add that to their fundraising page and um you know the person that you think that has you know the most wacky pair of pants you donate to their page and at the end of their uh um at the end of their campaign they had a you know fashion show so there's a lot of different ways that you can motivate and encourage people um, that doesn't necessarily have to be just um, competitive. Um,
So um, one common thing that we see on Giving Tuesday is um, a board challenge. This is really honestly like the most common type of um, peer to peer fundraising strategy we see. Um, one thing to think about when you're um, thinking about, you know, your board and doing something like this is like, if your board has any sort of requirements in participating for your organization, review their progress towards yearly commitments, because this could be an opportunity, um, you know, if your board members have to donate a certain amount to your organization or raise a certain amount for your organization, etc. Um, this could be an opportunity for them to work towards that yearly commitment that they have. Um, and it, again, provides them the opportunity to come together and participate and get involved with Give Back Tahoe Giving Season. You can make the process really easy by utilizing team fundraiser templates. So on your team fundraising page, uh, you can add a template. So when they go to create their page by selecting join this team, uh, a template is auto-populated for them that, you know, you can add a description, even, you know, a generic image so that it's really easy for them to participate. They don't have to put that much work or effort into actually setting up and creating their page. All right, so some marketing and promotion tips. So when you're thinking about um, the marketing content that you want to share, um, you first want to think about what is the overall story that you're um, telling this year? Um, you know, what do you want to tell donors about the impact your organization is, you know, wants to make coming in 2023? Um, I always like to say, you know, if you can, you can spend a minute and just think about how you would answer um, what does your organization do? What would a donation mean to you? And what, uh, you know, what support are you looking for? Um, and if you can answer that in like one brief sentence, um, like how would you say that to a child? I think that's a really great way to um, think through about what you wanna tell to your donors and your support network. Um, so when it comes to email marketing, um, during this time of the year, as we know with Cyber Monday and Giving Tuesday, people are going to be inundated with a lot of call to actions. So you want to make it short and sweet. You know, you don't want to make it um, incredibly wordy. Um, so you want to use strong language like "donate now," "help us today" to get it to make it very clear about what you are asking donors during this time of this uh, time of year. As well, it's really good to also have strong imagery in um, not only your social media, but in your emails that, again, kind of share the story of what you want to tell donors this year. We always recommend to making sure that you test your emails out and making sure that it's mobile friendly um, because most people will be looking at it through their phone. And you want to think about who do you want to reach out to and what content you want to share? So you want to segment your emails. So one being past donors. So donors that donated last year, your volunteer and board members. And you also want to consider, um, you know, the size of the donation. So maybe you want to reach, have a segment for your major donors. And also you maybe want to have a segment for um, donors that donated for the first time last year, or, you know, this is the second time. So you want to think through um, about the actual groups of people that you want to reach out to. So as I mentioned a couple of slides back, the donor retention report, um, you can pull that up to see all of your unretained donors this year or for this Give Back Tahoe giving season. So you can pull that list out for your um, email communication. And for that language, this is why it's important to segment donors is you can use language like give it again. We know we can count on you to acknowledge that they've donated again. They can make another impact this year. As well, within these emails, you can also include stories about how their donation impacted your nonprofit. You know, because of you, we were able to do X, Y, and Z. And of course, for major donors, it's always helpful to 
um, send personal email outreach um, to make sure that um, you know you can rely on their donation for this year. For social media, um, you want to utilize Give Back Tahoe as a hashtag um, so that your community overall can be engaged and people can see all of the um, work that you guys are doing in your community and raise awareness for the overall event. Uh, it can be on Giving Tuesday as well during the end of the year, you know, there's a lot going on and it may be difficult to manage this part. So think about appointing a social media manager or a volunteer that can help you manage your social media. Um, if you are have a small staff, you know, think about uh, reaching out to your local university or high school, even, um, you know, putting a post on volunteer match um, on the website as well on Give Back Tahoe um, to look for a volunteer who would be interested in social helping you uh, manage your social media. And one advice we always give to nonprofits who ask, you know, but where do I post? Like, do I post on Facebook? Do I post on Twitter? Do I start a TikTok account? And our answer is always, you know, go to where your audience is most engaged. Where are they getting their information? Um, if this year, you know, your overall goal is I want to create a TikTok account. We want to grow our social media presence. You know, definitely go ahead and do that. But you know, you want to work smarter, not harder. So really focus on the places of where your donors are. If your donors aren't on Twitter, then don't focus on Twitter. Focus on Instagram or Facebook if you know that's where donors are liking and engaging with your nonprofit. Uh, so when you um, are posting on social media, um, so on social media, really, um, if you aren't paying for uh, social media advertising on Instagram or Facebook, um, you're really then kind of, it's really up to the organic um, search or organic timeline that comes up for users. Um, because because you post something, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of your followers or network of people are going to see it on their social media timelines. So it is important to post, but it's also important to post good content or content that you can hack the algorithm or make it better for um, your nonprofit to be seen by your followers. So video is something that's really being pushed by Facebook and Instagram. Um, you, if you've been on those social media platforms, you've probably seen that you get a lot of videos. Um, so you want to think about if there is um, a potential short video or reel that you can post. Um, it doesn't have to be super complicated. It can be very simple. It can be a montage of just images. Um, again, and it should be under you know 30 seconds, really. Um, so think about a type of video that you can post on social media platforms. And if you are planning on um, putting an image post, which is also perfectly fine, um, you wanna think about the image that you wanna use and how that ties into your story. Um, the image doesn't have to be professional. So if you're worried that you don't have, uh, you know, professional high definition photos, that's perfectly fine. The most important thing is that does this image go back to the story that you're telling? Does this go back to what your call to action? So some useful social media tools to utilize is Canva. So if you don't have a Canva account, definitely recommend signing up for a Canva account. It is free for nonprofits to ac get access to Canva account because there are free uh, templates that you can use for social media. Linktree uh, is a really great tool um, if you haven't used utilized that before um, that allows you to essentially curate a directory of bookmarked links and you can add this to your Instagram bio. Unsplash is a site that provides you um, royalty free stock photos so if you are creating your content um, you can utilize Unsplash. Canva also has a really amazing um, stock library um, but if you aren't using that, Unsplash is a great resource. If you are looking to create a video, CapCut, if you do own um, a iOS device, um, 
it is a really simple and easy video editor. So you can create reels, stories um, very easily and right on your phone. Buffer is also a free tool that you can use and allows you to post and schedule out social posts. And then MailChimp also has a um, free, uh, free subscription if you want or paid subscription, and it will allow you to schedule out any emails um, that you want to schedule out if you don't have an email marketing platform yet. So after the Give Back Tahoe giving season, um, you're not officially done yet because it's really important to also follow up with the donors that gave. You have a batch of donors, whether they're new or returning, and you want to make sure that you are reaching out and genuinely thanking them for the support um, towards your nonprofit. It's a really great also process for um, stewarding um, and building out long lasting relationships because, you know, a, for example, a new donor this year could mean a matching grantor next year. So you want to make sure that you do um, thank your donors after they've given. And as well, um, this is also an opportunity for you to, um, in the future, um, continue the story that you're sharing for this Giving Tuesday uh, and, and this Give Back Tahoe giving season. So if there is a particular story that you're sharing, um, maybe you're an adoption, you know, an animal rescue, and you've spoken about, you know, a specific dog that you've supported in your follow-up emails, you can share the impact of that donation, you know, because of your gift, we were, we've been able to, you know, support this animal or we've been able to save X, Y, Z, et cetera. Uh, if there are any large donors or new donors, definitely want to make sure that you do personal outreach. And it's also helpful um, to kind of get to know, um, you know, new donors or any new supporters for your organization um, to see how they, how do they come in contact with your nonprofit? Um, are they interested in any volunteering opportunities, et cetera? And of course, for some of those special donors, maybe your matching grantor, um, it's always great to get a personalized thank you card signed by your executive director or your staff um, for their donation or their match. After the giving event, you also want to make sure that you are posting on social media. Um, letting your network know, um, you know, what your results are. If you didn't meet your goal or if you didn't reach, you know, the goal you have set, again, that's why it's helpful to have non-monetary goals and also mini goals, like share the overall success of, you know, what you're able to reach. Maybe you weren't able to, um, you know, meet, reach $5,000, but you gained, you know, new followers on social media, you were able to, you know, receive more new donors this year, etc. Uh, and as I mentioned, um, really great opportunity to close the loop on some of that storytelling you did, but also start planting the seeds for your 2023 campaign. What do you guys have coming up, etc. All right, some resources that we have available before we jump into questions. So one, our nonprofit toolkit resources. Uh, all of the webinars will are here. We'll be posting a recording and slide deck of this webinar on the toolkit. There's links to blog articles, oops, FAQs, um, templates, etc. cetera. Um, you can check it out. And of course, if, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact our support team. Um, we're always here to help guide you and steer you in the right direction. So I'm going to move this to questions. So I'm going to just open up the chat. Okay. Will you be explaining how to set up a page and how to launch it? Um, that is where I've gotten held up before and it didn't seem to work. This is in regards to peer to peer. Um, that is a really great question. So um, when it comes to peer to peer fundraising, um, so the first step is you want to create a uh, team fundraising page. Um, so I can actually go through that with you quickly.
Oops, let me. All right, so I am on my organization page. And at the top, there is a plus icon. You simply select the plus icon and you can select start team. It will tell you to get started. You would enter your organization. And then once you enter your organization, you would click, you know, build your team page. And then that will start the process of building your team page. Um, as you saw in the example in the screenshot, once you build out your team page, um, there is a button on the team that says join this team. And that's where individuals can start um, joining your team and creating their own pages. Is there a way to reactivate peer pages from previous years? Um, so if donations are, if they're turned off on those pages, um, yes, you can enable, um, you can enable for them to be turned on. Um, you can do so by going to their, um, their page and um, enabling that for them. If they're simply hidden through your campaigns tool, you can um, simply, uh, there's a menu section and you can select the fundraiser that you want unhidden and unhide it. Um, so you can um, help reactivate those pages. And if you can, if you run into any issues, just contact support at mightycause.com. Okay, a uh, question came in. Should we reach out to TTCF directly with questions about the challenge grants? And yes, yeah, so um, if you do have questions about challenge grants, um, th there will be an email being sent out. All right, how, how do you invite people to peer-to-peer -peer through Mighty Cause or our own newsletter platform? Um, so I would actually recommend both. Um, I would definitely recommend both. Um, so let me pull up a team page and I can show you an example quickly. Oops. All right, so I am just pulling up a team page. Okay. All right, so there is a section called participants. And so within your participants section, this is where you can go to, and there will be a plus icon. And through there, you can, um, essentially add the email address of people you wanna invite and it will send them an invitation to join your team. So this is one way that you can send out an invitation, but I definitely recommend to advertise it on your newsletter, um, to share information through your newsletter about you know, the opportunity and what you're looking for. Cause I'm sure you know, there might be someone who has an additional question or so about the process. So, um, but as you see here, so when people come onto the page or they want to create their um, uh, they want to create their fundraising page, they simply click select join this team, and then this will prompt them to create their um, page. Do we have to set up the peer to peer or can a board member through the, their own portal? So both. Um, so that is totally up to you of how you want to direct your board members to set up their page. So I've seen a both where I've seen it where um, some organizations have said, my board members are not going to do this. I just want to do it for them because I know if I just do it for them, they will participate, um, which is totally fine. So what they've done is they've created their team page and then they've gone ahead and built out each page for them. However, others have said, no, I want my board members, they can do that. Like, I, I trust them, believe in them that they can go in and create their page. And so if that's the case, then as I've mentioned, all you have to do is just send them a link to your team page and then tell them to select join this team. And then that will prompt them again to build and create their page. Um, they will be asked to sign up or log in if they haven't, um, if uh, in order to, create their page. So if they don't have an account, it'll prompt them to create an account. So 
just another, what do you mean by build out their page? So when you create a fundraising page, um, they're going to have to make publish it. So once the page is created, it's just in the creation stage, it's not published yet. So they just want to make sure that, for example, they maybe want to add their name in the title. So I'm just pulling this up as an example. So they probably will want to add their name to the title of it. If there's any description that um, they want to add, they can add it. Um, this is all stuff that you can add to your template so that they don't have to add it in, but they just want to make sure that, you know, the language is theirs, right? Maybe they want to add again, like Sue Grant's fundraising page. And then once they're done, they just simply click publish. So if, especially if you have a template, it's a really easy process. Even if you don't set up a template, um, we make it very explicit of what they need to complete in order to publish their page. Um, in order to publish their page, they just need um, a 